Horatius at the Bridge, part one of a poem translated by Thomas Babington Macaulay. Lord Parson of Clustium, by the nine gods he swore that the great house of Tarquin should suffer wrong no more. By the nine gods he swore it and named a trysting day and bade his messengers ride forth east and west and south and north to summon his array. East and west and south and north the messengers ride fast and tower and town and cottage of her the trumpets blast. Shame on the false Etruscan who lingers in his home when Porcina of Clustium is on the march for Rome. The horsemen and the footmen are parring in a main for many a stately marketplace, for many a fruitful plain, for many a lonely habit which hid by beech and pine, like an eagle's nest trying on the crest of purple Apennine. From lonely Volaterra, where scowls of fire flamed hold, piled by the hands of giants for the godlike kings of old, from Tingo Bologna, where sentries descry Sardinia's snowy mountain tops fringing the southern sky, from the proud Morta Pisae, we near the western waves, where ride Messilia's triremes, heavy with fair haired slaves. From where Cleclanus wanders through corn and vines and flowers, from where Cortona lifts to heaven her diadem of towers, tall are the oaks whose acorns drop in Errol Oster's rill, fat are the stags that champ the boughs of Minian Hill. Beyond all streams, Clitumnus is to the herdsman dear, best of all pools the fowler loves, the great Volscian mere. But now no stroke of woodman is heard by Osser's rill, no hunter tracks a stag's green path up the Siminian hill. A watch along Clitumnus grazes the white steer, and harm the waterfowl may dip in Volscian mere. The Vardus of Arentium this year old men shall reap. This year our own boys in Umbro shall plunge the struggling sheep. And in the vats of Luna this year the must shall foam round the white hate of laughing girls whose sires have marched to Rome. There be thirty thousand prophets, the wisest of the land, who always by Lars Porcina, both the morn and evening stand. Evening and morn the thirty have turned the verses over, traced from the right on linen white by mighty seers of yore. And which one voice the thirty have their glad answer given? Go forth, go forth, Lars Porcina, go forth, beloved of heaven. Go and return in glory to Clusium's royal dome, and hang round Nurcia's altar the golden shields of Rome. And now hath every city done up her tale of men, the foot are fourscore thousand, the horse are thousands ten. Before the gates of Tutrium is met the great array, a proud man was Lars Porcina upon the trysting day. For all Truscan armies were ranged beneath his eye, and many a banished Roman, and many a stout ally, and with a mighty following to join the muster came, the Tusculan Mamumilius, prince of the Latian name. But by the yellow Tiber was tumult and affright, from all the days his champaign, the old men took their flight, and the mile around the city, the throng stopped. Up the ways a fearful fight as sight it was to see through two long nights and days. For ages folk on crutches, and women great with child, and mothers sobbing over babes that clung to them and smiled, and sick men born on litters high on the necks of slaves, and troops of sunburned husbandmen with ribbing hooks and staves, and droves of mules and asses laden with skins of wine, and endless flocks of goats and sheep, and endless herds of kine, and endless trains of wagons that creak beneath the weight of corn sacks and of household goods choked every roaring gate. Now from the rock Tarpeian could the wan and burthers spy the lane of blazing villages red in the midnight sky. The fathers of a city that sat all night and day for hour every hour some horsemen came with sidings of dismay. Did eastward and to westward have spread the Tuscan bands, nor house, nor fence, nor dovecot, and cruz to Merriam stands. For Benna down to Ostia has wasted all the plain. Aster has stormed Janiculum, and the stout guards are slain. I witnessed in all the Senate there was no heart so bold, but sore it ached and fast it beat when all Adil news was told. 
For with uprose the council, uprose the fathers all, in haste they girded up their gowns and hied them to the wall. They held a council standing before the river gate. Short time there was there, you well may guess, for using or debate. Up spake the council roundly, the bridge must straight come down, for since Janiculum is lost, not else can save the town. Just then a scout came flying, all wild with haste and fear. To arms, to arms, our council! Lars Porsena is here! On the low hills to westward the council fills to die, and store the swarthy storm of dust right fast along the sky. A nearer, fast and nearer, doth the red whirlwind come, and louder still and still more loud from underneath that rolling cloud is heard the trumpet's war note proud, the trampling and the hum. And plainly and more plainly now through the gloom appears, far to left and far to right and blue can gleam is a blue light. The long array of helmets bright, the long array of spears. And plainly and more plainly above the glittering plain, now might ye see the banners of twelve Cersides strung. The banner of poor old Clustium was highest of them all, the terror of the Umbrian, the terror of the Gaul. And plainly and more plainly, now might the burghers know, by port and vest, by horse and crest, each warlike Ukumo. Their silliness of Retium of his fleet Rhone was seen, and Aster of the fourfold shield, girth with the brand, none else may wield. Tolumnus with the belt of gold, and dearth Rubina from the hold by Ridi Thrasimene. Fast by the royal standard, overlooking all the war, Lord Porson of Clustium sat in his ivory car. By the right wheel stood Mamilius, prince of the Latian name, and by the left fall Sextus, who wrought the deed of shame. When the face of Sextus was seen among the foes, a yell that rent the firmament from all the town arose. On the housetop was no woman, but spat towards him and hissed. No child but screamed out curses and shook its little fist. But the consul's brow was sad, and the consul's speech was low, and darkly looked he at the wall, and darkly at the foe. Their ban will be upon us before the bridge goes down, and if they months may win the bridge, what hope to save the town? Then out spake brave Horatius, the captain of the gate, To every man upon this earth death cometh soon or late. And how can man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his fathers and the temples of his gods, and for the tender mother who dandled him to rest, and for the wife who nurses her babe at her breast, and for the holy maidens who do the eternal flame that save them from false sextus that wrought the deed of shame? You down the judge go, Council, with all the speed ye may, I, with two more to help me, will hold the foe and play. In yon straight path a thousand may well be stopped by three. Now who will stand on either hand and keep the bridge with me? The end of part one of Horatius at the Bridge by Thomas Babington Macaulay.